Hi, I'm Mike. Did you ever stop to think about, that even though your life is made up of hundreds of people, hundreds of influences, thousands even, there's always that one person that made all the difference in the world. Today, on April 1st, on a very special anniversary, we take a look at that one person in my life. Hi guys, welcome back to another uh, installment here of our uh, daily vlogs. It's 30 vlogs in 30 days. Some people are calling it 30-30, uh, some are calling it the Dirty 30, which might be a little bit more appropriate. I got my hat a little bit cleaned off. It was a little dusty from yesterday still, so air compressor does the trick for that. Today is April 1st. Uh, traditionally, it's April Fool's Day, and honestly, around here, we don't play that many April Fool's jokes. And there's one reason behind that, and that reason I want to share with you today. As uh, we get a chance to go out, we're going to check the cows. We still have not had a calf yet. Um, our due date, our official first calf's due date is tomorrow, April 2nd. Today, there's a bunch of cows out there with their, with their legs crossed still thinking about it, but we do have a storm that's still coming in today. Um, tonight, we're expected to get five inches of snow, which means that I'm not gonna get much sleep tonight. I'm going to be out checking cows every few hours. Uh, that snow should be, more than likely, it'll be a wet snow, so any calves that are born in it are gonna have some trouble to start with. So I'll be out checking them all night long, but that snow that's coming has actually already been bringing the barometric pressure down. Uh, the, yesterday, I think we had a high temperature right around 60 degrees. Today, the high temperature has been 22. And uh, tomorrow or tonight, it's actually going to fall even more. Tomorrow's high, I think, if I remember right, uh, is 2 degrees. So it's going to be a cold day tomorrow, which, of course, will affect calving. And, of course, it's the first official day of calving on April 2nd. Today, though, is April 1st. And like I said, it's April Fool's Day, but not just for any fool. We are here uh, pretty much at this point thanks to one person. Now, there are hundreds of people that got us to the point uh, where we are today. Where it's here on the ranch, we have YouTube going for us, we've got the farm store, we've got jerky, uh, I'm doing speaking engagements, all this kind of stuff is all thanks to hundreds, if not thousands, of people who have helped us get to the point uh, that we're at today. But today, April 1st, there's only one person who I count as really being the driving force behind Aaron and I being on the ranch. And that is Aaron's stepdad, Gilbert. Now we're gonna head out and check cows, but I'm bringing you along with me today uh, so I can tell you a little bit about Gilbert. I know I've talked about it in some past videos, but those videos were months ago. And obviously we have a lot of new subscribers uh, in our in our midst forgot to close the garage door the shop door now it's not going to want to close hold on okay there we go it's coming down all right so where was i yeah, so we have, uh, I, I don't even know how many new subscribers, how many new fans, how many new followers of our Wyoming life, new people that are exploring the ranch life and escaping their ordinary every single day. And a lot of these people, uh, when I say Gilbert, some people don't even know who I'm talking about. And, and I know that I can't, uh, you know, constantly keep shoving this stuff down your guys' throats. Uh, so I do have to pick, um, you know, pick my times where I can come in and talk about uh, talk about things that uh, how we got here and, and and the past and all this kind of stuff because uh, obviously it matters, but at the same time it can't be something we're constantly harping on. So uh, I'm going to step back here a little bit. Some of these stories some of you guys may have heard before, and if you have, uh, bear with me. I do have some new stuff coming up. I'm going to jump out here and check. I'm going to open up this gate really quick and let these cows go in here. Hello. 
gonna come see me? Hey, come here. Come here. Hey, buddy. Come here. Come here. Come here. <laughs> come here, a little closer. Come here. Come here. All right, get you. That's Cracker Jack, by the way. Cracker Jack is our lead steer. And um, he obviously uh, came from a white cow who was his mom. And Gilbert loved that white cow uh, before he passed away. And I thought that, you know, having a lead steer from her was a way to keep that one white cow uh, on the ranch all the time. Gilbert, I mean, that was, I think that was probably the first cow that I met uh, when we came to the ranch, and it was white cow, and, and I don't know why, but Gilbert was always really proud to have a white cow with him on the ranch. So, <laughs> I'm sure somebody's asking themselves, well, what does this have to do with the, the price of tea in China? And the big, the, 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 the reason it does is because Gilbert actually passed away on April April 1st, April Fool's Day. And we actually kind of said it was it was a, a fitting day for Gilbert to pass. And when he, the day he passed away was the day that Aaron and I were basically handed this life. I mean, Aaron's mom is still here, but it was at that time that all of a sudden it was just like, okay, this is now your responsibility. And this was the time that we decided that uh, when Gilbert passed away, Mackenzie was let, was a year old, and it was very much like, you know, it's it's time for you guys to step up. And the day that both Aaron and I kind of said, okay, now, um, now we have this much bigger responsibility. We have this much bigger problem to deal with, and and how we deal with it is going to define our lives. When I came to the ranch, it was just another job. I came here to help out Aaron's family. We had uh, we had just gotten married, so there was that. You know, you wanna you wanna impress the family and that kind of thing. So uh, we we were married for for less than six months when we decided, you know, after Gilbert started to get sick, that we would come back to the ranch here and 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 give him a hand if, if just for just for the winter was our was our original plan and of course we stayed longer than that and when gilbert got sick even more sick and ended up in the hospital and and we we knew that that this was not going to end well it was a, it, you know he had fallen um, he had broken his back and he was life flighted to the Casper Hospital. And Aaron and I had to drive back and forth. And it, it was this time of year, obviously. It was it was the week leading up to today. And we were uh, we were calving at that point. Uh, we actually had things happening. We don't have anything happening right now, of course not. But uh, we were calving at that point. So what I had to do was I had to drive back and forth from Casper every single day. So I would uh, I'd get up in the morning, I'd check the cows, I'd feed the cows, I would you know, make sure that nobody's having a calf or anybody that's having a calf is taken care of. I think our neighbor Gary was helping us out at that time too. And then I would jump in the car and I would drive. And a few of those times, Erin would go back and forth with me, even though that she did stay in a hotel with her mom for a lot of that times too. But um, some of those times, Erin did come back and forth with me. And we talked a lot on those, on those drives back and forth about, you know, what are we going to do if, um, if Gilbert passes away, what is going to happen to the ranch? Now we knew that Gilbert was going to leave the ranch to Aaron's mom. We knew that was going to happen, but what what was going to happen after that? And we knew that we could possibly have some sort of influence in those decisions that would follow. We could we could tell Aaron's mom, hey, you know what? Let's you should probably just sell the whole place and. Um, you know, take that money and move to Tahiti or whatever, you know, or do we, or do we, you know, do we, do we make a commitment to what Gilbert really, really, really cared about? And there, there were very few um, experiences, times in my life when, when I was dealing with Gilbert that 
really told me what I should do at that point. I think that uh, a lot of families could probably do very well with having conversations now that are super uncomfortable and nobody ever wants to have, but having those conversations now so that there isn't any guesswork at the end. Luckily, you know, we knew that Gilbert cared about these ranches more than anything in his entire life. That's what he cared about. He cared about animals, he cared about land, and he, you know, he grew up in a different generation, awful, you know, as well, but um, it, it, he just, that's what he cared about. He cared about the land, he cared about the animals. Every single day when Gilbert was alive that I was here on the ranch, I had to drive Gilbert out to the ranch every day, and he would come out, and he would putz around on his gator, and he would visit the cows, and we would have to go down and, and cake the cows, and, and that's what he lived for. So, when we when we suspected that uh, that he wasn't going to live uh, much longer, uh, Aaron and I had a conversation about what we wanted to do, and we had Mackenzie at that point, um, and we decided that that we wanted to be here. And the, for me, and I can't really speak for Aaron, but the the big thing for me uh, there was there was two experiences that I had with Gilbert. Uh, that, that really, really set me uh, on this path that I'm on today. Uh, one was right after we came to the ranch. I think, I, I think it was that first summer that we were here and um, you know, dealing with family and, and working with family and of course your in-laws who you kind of know but you don't really know and, and especially the first year being married and everything else and all the stresses on top of that. And we, I, I remember coming to Gilbert at one point and it was right in the shop and he was sitting on his little gator and I said Gilbert I don't think I can do this this isn't really me like right I, I came I came up I worked in corporate America I you know did all this you know great stuff that I love doing and this is so backwards for me and also like I just I don't think I don't think I can the family aspect of it was really new to me I'm I didn't come from a really really close family and stuff like that and um, so that was interesting for me to deal with and I told Gilbert I said I don't think I can I can do this and um, Gilbert sitting there on his gator. He 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 looked at me and he said, "I need you here." He said, "I, I he said, don't leave me, Mike. I need you here." And uh, at that time, I actually had offers from different radio stations to go work, and uh, I decided that um, that probably I should stay. So we decided to stay then, and we worked for a few, you know a couple more years, and then Gilbert got even more sick. He fell. He broke his back, and. Uh, and the day that the day that Gilbert broke his back, um, he had fallen, and I helped him up, and he, he said he was fine. So uh, it, <laughs> then you know a couple of days later, he still wasn't feeling that great. Um, I think Rita took him to the hospital at that point. He finally agreed to go to the emergency room. Um, they found out that he had broken his back, and they gave him a bunch of pain medication, and that pain medication basically shut him down, uh, shut him down on the inside. Uh, and 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 uh, Rita called me into town again, and she said, you know, can you talk to Gilbert? And we got to convince him to go back to the hospital. And and you know, I went and talked to him, and I said, you know, there's just just call that call that call the ambulance, you know, like time type, type of thing. And. And they came and they took him up to the emergency room and then next thing you know they're they're flying him to, to Casper. And he's he's getting wheeled out and and um, the one thing he said to me is he's getting wheeled out, he said, run it into the ground, Mike, run it into the ground. I really didn't know what that meant at that time, you know, maybe that's like an old cowboy saying, I don't know. Um, you know, is it is it, you know, for me, when somebody if somebody told me to run it into the ground, I would think, you know, basically run it until you're out of money run it you know run it until there's nothing left um but i don't i don't really know if that's what gilbert meant i think i i honestly think that gilbert meant you know just just you take it you run with it and so that's that's what we decided to do so the uh there's no cows out here doing anything by the way um that's that's really you know the time that that you know when I when we were going back and forth and, and Aaron and I were driving, that's what really clinched it for me. And I decided that that maybe this life could be um, something for us at that point. Maybe that's what we needed was somebody who had the the faith in us to just take it 
and run with it. July and everything turned upside down. Lost track of everything but each other. I honestly don't know. Tell me how we messed up, drifting away from each other. Didn't wanna let you go. Oh, oh, oh. Cause we want different things and I have to deal with it. But it's not easy. So tell me how to let go. Cause you really seem to know how to carry. So every year on April 1st, I make a short trip only 65 feet from the ranch fence and visit Gilbert, where he can watch over the entire ranch every day. The original joke when Gilbert passed away was that we buried him this close so that he could keep an eye on what I was doing and tell me when I was doing it wrong. But I think that he would have had a very nice laugh at the fact that now I have an entire internet to tell me that I'm doing it wrong. Without Gilbert being here on the ranch and bringing us into the fold, I never would have met any of you. I never, I wouldn't have met some of my best friends that I have in the entire world right now. And for that, there's only one person to thank, especially today. And that's my father-in-law, Gilbert. Uh, was Gilbert perfect? No. Am I perfect? No. But I do think that Gilbert did something that very few people get a chance to do. And that was through actions of his own that created uh, an effect, a snowball effect, that rolled across the entire world. I don't know what Gilbert would think of YouTube and the internet and you know teaching people where their food comes from but I do know that he would have thought it was something pretty special and so do I so that's it for me today I'm gonna it's April 1st it's just a it's always a weird day around here um, of course no calves being born we have our storm moving in tonight i'm going to be up all night i'll be running i'll be filming during the entire evening so we can keep an keep, keep track of what's what's happening um, but <laughs> if you if you come to the channel just to to watch cows run around and calves being born then this probably wasn't the video for you but this is really about where we came from and and what how we were lucky enough to be here and and really if you go back um, you know, hundreds of people make you who you are, thousands of people make you who you are, but there's always that one person that gave you a break, gave you a chance. <laughs>